Hello it's everyone! Welcome. Hello everyone, welcome back to Universally University. You um, might want to do that again, John. I, I was talking over you. You were talking over me? I was talking over you. You may have to... We're, let's, let's, let's just do the intro again. It's, it's, a, it's only a hello. What, what do you want me to do? Do, do, do? do you want me to say it in an Australian accent? Or should we have no, you doing no. it for a change? <laughs> No, it's only just in case because I was talking over you. That's the only thing. <laughs> Hello, chums. <laughs> Welcome back to Universally University, everyone. This is episode four. Mm-hmm. So, was that everything all right? Was, was that better? That's better. That's better. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's not um, all these starts for podcast ever. <laughs> this is the weirdest start I've ever had. Um, well, well, guys, welcome back to the podcast. And Dan, welcome back from the clutches ah, of Liverpool. Of oh, um, Liverpool, yes, indeed. <laughs> yeah, well, it's good horrible. to be back. It's good Ho- to be back. Horrible place. Anyway, how oh, was your last... It's not that bad. <laughs> Hor- horrible place. How has your last two weeks been, Dan? I feel like every single time that you miss something, we've got to catch up the next two weeks. So otherwise, otherwise, we'll have in the comments, what's Dan's been doing? What has he been doing? Why didn't you ask him? <laughs> no, I think, I think it's really odd because lockdown has made it so that most days just bleed into one. So some days you're actually doing things and other days you're not doing anything. You're just in bed. Um, I'm trying to think, what, what, what have I done? I, I think having to think about what I've done <laughs> in volumes. So it says a I've lot. probably not done anything. The fact you've um, actually had to think. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I'm back into, I, I've started running again. I'm sure you that's exceptional. You started important. running? I started, started running. started running? Yeah. Back, yeah, back into back into going for my daily jog. Uh, I, I had a sort of three week, I had a three week lull where I didn't do any physical activity. But now I'm slowly but surely coming back into it. Uh, it was baking hot the other day, Ooh. so don't tell me you went for uh, a run then. Uh, no, <laughs> no, oh, I, I did the day after, even though it was still hot. But um, I did, I did, um, I, I missed out on that day because I think everybody was just stuck to their sofas, weren't they? How, oh, uh, yeah. How's your how's your last two weeks been, other than the uh, the podcast with Charlie? How uh, how's I it mean, been? My last two weeks, the week before I did that podcast was mm-hmm. quiet. I think that was yeah. a week when it was raining a lot, so I had the excuse to stay in and play on my PS4 and stuff like that. And then the week just gone uh went mm-hmm. to manchester for the afternoon to mm-hmm. see some mates socially distanced obviously just been applying for a few jobs here and there watching Don't a bit of football it. yeah um, planning for this podcast mm-hmm. uh lying in bed uh reading i've been doing a fair bit i've been uh, trying to stay <laughs> up and about so uh it's been a good two weeks been a good two good. weeks that's good that's, that's very good at least you're keeping yourself entertained yeah, that's, that's what it should stuff. be. Anyway, Thank guys, you. so episode four. So we're entering a second half of the series now. So up to this point, we've been talking primarily about theatre and the arts, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And for you guys to be listening to theatre week in week out, there comes a point where it does get a little bit boring. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we're. So we're entering a new phase, and because the title is obviously Universally University, it's not called Theatrally University. Theatrally isn't really a word, but I just thought I'd throw it in there. So we are now going to be branching into more general university topics. And to start off this second half of the series, it's just going to be me and Dan again, as you guys can quite definitely hear. Um, But yeah, so we're talking about today, we're talking about uh, our hobbies let's call them on youtube and instagram obviously i have my own youtube channel for people who are watching on youtube and people who follow down on instagram and if you haven't the link is all the way back in episode two dan (laughs) does a lot of music covers and he does them daily he sings daily and he puts (laughs) puts them on his stories daily hourly or even minutely he he puts them on (laughs) <laughs> he, he puts them Very on he, 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 he spams his Instagram with them I'm not saying that <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I assume I'm not saying that's a bad thing I'm not no, saying that's I a understand. bad thing 
It, I'm not saying it's a bad thing at all. I'm saying it's a it's it's a brilliant thing. I love spamming. Yes, it's, I it's, do. A, it's a better thing than just seeing spams of like memes and stuff like that. Repeated memes yes. that you've seen over and over again. Yeah, you could make my covers into memes. I guess you, you could do. You could. Be. You could. I, I mean, guess. hey, here's a challenge for you. At the end of the series, let's hear a mm-hmm. memed cover of something. Just make a meme okay. of one of your covers. All right. It, okay. Wrap it or something okay. like that. That's I'm, the challenge. Are we talking? Are we talking like an actual like of one of my covers, or are we talking like to do like a cover of like Darude Sandstorm or something? <laughs> something like that. Something like okay, that. We'll leave, right, we'll leave right. it to you. We'll see what leave we can. With me. We'll see what you can leave come up with. with. Oh, looking <laughs> forward to that. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that. But anyway, um, particularly at university, people join societies, don't they? People have a mm-hmm. a hobby on the outside of whatever subject they do. So, for instance, yeah. you could be studying business and. You know, you could go to the drama society if they've got one. You could go to a music society. If you're mm. interested in politics, you can either join Labour or Conservative societies. You can even mm. join a socialist society or even a chicken nugget society as well. <laughs> but the list is endless. But societies essentially are another hobby for people, aren't they, to have yeah. on the outside of their actual subject. But for some people mm. who don't join societies they turn to social media so they turn to tiktok they turn to youtube they turn to instagram so just to get us started dan where did your mm-hmm. love for music covers come from and mm-hmm. yeah why did you choose to put them on instagram i i'll just preface this by saying i i very rarely do stuff that is my own i can write stuff um, and I do still write stuff with um, a couple of Don't say that you don't write your own stuff, Dan. I know. The viewers. Indeed, but I, I guess, I guess I, I, the first sort of ones I did were like back in 2017. And they were just sort of like me messing about. I'd recently got a, a loop pedal for my birthday, which is like basically where you can just pop like different loops through either a guitar or a microphone or something. And you can loop it through whatever amplifier or speakers you have. Um, and so I discovered the very easy way of um, creating music through like layers. So you'd start with a bass line, then you'd make a drum pattern, and then you'd do like vocals and harmonies and stuff, and then you do chords and things. So that's kind of basically how it started because I just, I, I could listen to a song and I, know, I have enough musical knowledge to kind of, I say enough, barely, but enough musical knowledge to be able to sort of think, oh, right, okay, I could, I could, I could use that chord progression, and then I use that, and then that. Um, and I, once, once I started to practice and mess about, I'm, I am through and through a bedroom guitarist. I'm not going to lie. Oh, yeah. Um, like, if, if, if you watch Dan's Instagrams, every single time, it's literally the ceiling. That is <laughs> yeah. the picture. The picture is the Definitely. ceiling. The picture is the ceiling, but then again, that is basically how I start most of my yeah. FaceTime calls with mates. Like, I've got the phone yes. down, I put the call on, and then every single time it comes on, people are looking at the ceiling, and it's just like... It's the iconic oh, image of the ceiling. It's oh, the iconic image. It's like, oh, guys, we're seeing a bit of uh, Jono's cupboards today. What a treat! <laughs> I know what you, you see mean. see more of my room. <laughs> Ceilings are iconic, guys. Use yes, them. they are. Yes, they are. Ceilings are iconic. That's a good album title. <laughs> uh, so no, that, that's basically it and uh, the more the more i did um the more people seemed to sort of like them mm. and being performers we we thrive off attention unfortunately but that's no bad thing um and so the more the more people seem to like them the more i i carried on doing them mm. and some of them uh, i look back on and i cringe but some of them i'm kind of proud of and a lot of the stuff that i that i try and put out I always do because I think in the moment that it sounds good. Mm. And that's kind of just basically it. And a lot of places need to see like um, your social media to go, give us examples of your work. And I don't have much sort of monologues or like stuff to the camera or on screen or on set uh, that I can sort of show. So I always just direct into my Instagram and go, look, I, I sort of do these little music covers. People give me suggestions and I make very sort of daft versions of songs and they that's always a good thing it's always it's it's a string to your bow i guess that's that's kind of how my process is to be honest yeah i mean so so it's a kind of it is a hobby for you on the side i mean Mm -hmm. i know in episode two we talked about how you're looking to do 
a master's in music. In music, yeah. Um, so particularly though, doing those music covers, it shows where your love is and you're keeping that hobby on the outside. And yeah. having known you all throughout university, I've mm -hmm. known that you have used music a lot in mm -hmm. your performances. It's pretty much, yeah. it's, it's very central to your um, <laughs> performance kind of skills and your general performances yeah. that you've done. So yeah. how do you think that these music covers have helped you to develop your creative skills even before university happened, if you started doing them before university um, began yeah. for you? Um, I, think, I think they're a very good form of practice. And even if they turn out to not be very good or they turn out to be subpar compared to other ones I've made, um, I see them as a learning curve, every single one that I do. And the, the key to it really <laughs> is just the more you do, the easier things get. And they're, they're also just nice release also. I've said also twice. And um, they are just, they, they are a nice release. And I, I don't know if people, at the end of the day, if people like them and enjoy them, then that's great. But they're more for my own personal development, I guess. Not, not that I'm saying I, I love if people like or hate or whatever. I welcome all feedback and stuff like that. I mean, you have to because mm. um, that's sensible. But I, I, I guess I, I do them more for my own personal development. And it cheers me up. I, th I think mm. uh, same, as, same as obviously we'll, we'll talk about you and your YouTube channel and how it started and how it's grown. Um, but at the, at the end of the day, if you're, if you're doing something and it's fun, then you've made it really mm. like even if it's just on a very small scale like i only have about 400 followers but like if it if it makes people smile if it makes me smile then mm. i've succeeded i guess yeah which is like a happy ending i guess hey. <laughs> i mean but yeah how do you think it's developed your skills have they particularly served you as you were going into university like what do it doing these kind of hobbies i think what we're mm. trying to get out of this discussion for those of you who are listening is mm -hmm. don't feel pressured to join societies because mm -hmm. don't get me wrong societies will enhance your overall development but if you don't want to go to them because i will admit some society some societies well all yeah. societies ask you to pay for instance um mm -hmm. but if you want to do something completely free then find a mm -hmm. hobby that myself and dan are doing so either go yeah. start a youtube channel start yeah. music covers because for you, Dan, what has been the most transferable skill or the most useful transferable skill that you've gained from doing this? Because obviously mm -hmm. now we're in a big wide yeah. world and we're in the wild. Yeah. This is doing the music covers is something you can put on your CV and it's going to be something yeah. that people are looking at, particularly now we're coming out of lockdown. Employers are going to be looking at that and think to themselves, oh, yeah. he kept himself going. He's put mm -hmm. an original idea down. Well, mm -hmm. I say original idea, but he's, he's kept himself going. He's doing yeah. things, and that's what people want. So mm -hmm. what for you, doing the music covers has been the most important transferable skill that you've developed? Um, comfortableness in performance, I'd say. I, I, I think the, the more, obviously, like I said, the more you do, the easier it gets. And it helps because my sort of my year kind of culminated with um, mm. in third year culminated with two performances one a live sort of music type thing that i did and another was me performing to the camera and what it's kind of made me feel more comfortable with is not only sort of performing to a camera and like making things that people can watch so the nerves sort of get easier but you know into how to edit sound and how to edit film and how to make things look good how to kind of make a shot of my ceiling look remotely arty do you know what i mean it's 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 given me it's it's put me down two different paths of being able to sort of uh cope with nerves and cope with sort of feeling at home when i'm performing but also it's like how i can embellish my covers or my a little original clips that i do um because it's all practice and the, I'm not enough that you, you, you get better at something by putting it into practice, I think. Um, whether that's writing or directing or, or sport or, you know, just or maths, anything. Mm. You, you get better at it through sort of practicing, transferable practice, I guess. Yeah. But yeah, that's, it, yeah, helping performance. Helping. Okay. 
I can imagine it does because obviously it brings you out of your shell and it makes you more confident to try yeah. different things, doesn't it? So mm -hmm. talking about trying different things, mm -hmm. what, what was for you your most ambitious cover? Um, <laughs> I'd say, uh, I'm trying to think, there is one I am in the process of doing. Ooh. And it's a song that doesn't have a title, but it's by a guy called Reggie Watts. Okay. And Reggie Watts does, he, he beatboxes, and I can't beatbox, but I know enough of how to loop my own mouth sounds to create a beat. Mm. And I'm trying to, it's really weird, I'll, I'll, we'll link it, I'll send you the link, John, and you can put the link in the description because it is nice fantastic. Um, but it's the one he does at a TED Talk, and it's all just, just an entire song based on his voice. So oh, like wow. he'll sing, he'll sing, but he won't be singing any words. He'll just be kind of just. So it's really weird. To, it's really hard to explain. It's very is he trying to harmonize? Is he trying to harmonize? His Literally, voice? yes. He harmonizes with himself. He creates vocal lines that are just sort of a bit crazy and off the wall. Wow. Um, so I, that's the one I'd say is the most ambitious that I'm doing. But I, I'd have to. I don't know any of any of my like. I did a nice cover of of a forest by the cure i was very proud of that um i've got it up on my twitter that was from 2018 2017 18 um and that was i i displayed how to create the entire song so i how to create the drum beat how to create the bass line how to create the guitar tone and everything and i i that's one thing it's on my instagram i'll you know you can have a look if you want or don't it's up to you um <laughs> but that, that i'd say i i like being able to display how i don't want to say easy but how how simple music looping can be so mm. i'd say the the cure one yeah okay. absolutely. Very, absolutely. Good. very good <laughs> so out of everything every social media thing that's out there you know mm -hmm. you've got facebook instagram twitter yep. youtube mm -hmm. LinkedIn. Um, what else have you got? I'm, I'm trying to think of any others. Um, I'm trying to think. We've got LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat. Um, I'm trying to think. They're sort of the main players, really, mm. aren't they? Yeah. Out of all of those, why mm -hmm. specifically did you choose Instagram to host your music covers? Um, because it, it's pretty... Instagram is sort of the king of creating short content after Vine went away. True. And yeah, so it's like the, to, to put up like a small 15 second clip of me just singing some random song. It was exceptionally easy. It cuts up the video. So if you take a video, it's about a minute long. It cuts up your video into 15 second strips. And I kind of, it helps my OCD to be able to create like parts of something. Mm. And I'll explain it like this. When you put up a video on Instagram on the stories section, it splits it into four sections, yeah. but it doesn't, you have to like, you have to um, edit it in a very certain way. So if I want to put the title of a song, I have to put the title of the song in the same place in each of the four sections. Yeah. And then I, yeah. And then I have to put in the logo of sound on, which is my thing that I, I well, it's not my thing, but it's just a thing people do when they do music, just so people know, Oh, look, I'm doing some music. Um, and then, sound on, listen to it, please. Sound on. Yes. <laughs> and then, um, it's just about getting everything in the right order. And then it's kind of like I've actually accomplished something. Mm. And I sound daft, but it feels like I've created something. I've built it and then I've put it out there. And it could be, it could be absolutely rubbish, but like it's, it, it does kind of make you a little bit proud. And, that's, and yeah. Instagram is the easiest one to do it on, I'd say. Yeah, yeah. So I suppose like as well it kind of develops your editing as well, doesn't it? It's yes. like that whole thing of doing it all yourself, putting it all together, mm -hmm. and then sending it out thinking, oh, I did that. Let's, let's show it to the world. But it's not one of the, those things where you put the credits on and it's like, you know, directed by Daniel Helis, produced by Daniel <laughs> Helis. The, the title of the song might as well just be Daniel Helis. <laughs> Catering by Daniel Helis, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Life. By Daniel Heaton. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's very true. Well, oh, it is. It's true. It's like, and that's what I wanted to, obviously, when we go more into the YouTube sort of section, I don't know um, if we, you want to go into it now, but it's like, it's like, how come 
and I'll bring the question straight back to you. How come YouTube was the thing for you? How come, you know, why did you feel the most comfortable on YouTube? Because obviously you've had your channel for probably since, well, as long as I've known you. So mm. it's probably just the best part of three years. Um, why YouTube, Donna? Well, <laughs> it's interesting because there's a lot of, um, I actually had a very old channel beforehand where mm. I did a lot of videos, but it wasn't as original. It wasn't as creative. It was, it's one of those, it was one of those channels where, you know, you put up clips of, certain tv shows and stuff like that you, you wouldn't be doing it to get original content <laughs> and um i actually remember one of the videos that i put up weirdly and for some reason when i was younger i was so so proud of it it was a video of you know the old cbbc intro where it was just it went cbbc and then it was yeah, like, yeah, yeah. it was a proper guitar riff i remember mm -hmm. being so proud of that because somehow I've, I've even got forgotten how i did it some some reason and somehow i managed to burn that intro and just put it on the computer and i was able just to upload it so i just uploaded it and got, how many views did you get <laughs> i got at least 100 as far as i can Yay, remember 100 views. You broke which, 100 views. That's which 100 at the time was uh big for me but um well, it's, <laughs> it's still big for me um but yeah so my love for youtube just started from the fact that I always enjoy performing, you know, no matter where I was, you know, mm. even if it was, you know, even if it was in the bathroom and I was just holding the toothbrush to, to my mouth and singing away while the electric like bristles just started turning and the toothpaste was just hitting my face, you know, that wouldn't <laughs> matter. That wouldn't matter at all. And I think just every so often you felt free in front of the camera yeah. when you didn't have a script there. And you just came out with your own ideas. And my love for YouTube as well came from a love for editing as yeah. well. It came from a love for editing and changing it and turning it into your own original way. Um, so, yeah, that's where my love for YouTube really started. I just enjoyed yeah. coming out with my own content. And it gave me a chance as well to bring out myself, if that makes sense. Because I remember. Yeah when I did that video on cover and I was talking about how particularly in secondary school, I struggled to find myself. I tried mm -hmm. to be someone who I wasn't. Mm -hmm. YouTube allowed me to bring that side of myself and keep that side of myself alive rather than it being completely lost forever. Mm. And, Absolutely. That's fantastic. And particularly when I came to university, you know, it helped me to strengthen that even yeah. in, dark moments and it allowed me to talk about it and i suppose in some way become a bit braver and become a bit more open because no one knew in first year that that is what i kind of suffered with people didn't realize that that was what i suffered with so it was a nice way for me to open up because i could own it i owned when they found yeah. out that makes sense yeah and they found out in a way where i could stay in control with it mm -hmm. So yeah, that's where my love for YouTube really started. Just the creativeness about it, the freedom to be yourself as well, and its ability to bring out the best in you. That, yeah. sounds, that sounds like a TED Talk kind of... No, but, no, but it's a very good one. It's a very oh, good one. It's quite, it's, no, but it is. It's, it's quite inspiring to hear that you using a social media platform when there is so much, there is so much obviously like taboo around social media and how it, mm. people think it makes you, I'm, I'm not disputing it. I, I, I agree with a lot of what people say. A lot of people say that, that obviously social media not only like makes your world more enhanced, but it also makes you more lonely or it's, you know, this, that and the other. Mm. And it is nice to hear, especially with YouTube and how sort of the content creators are, like at the forefront of the news all the time now and all this mm. and most of it is good news how you've been able to find or like i guess that you've been able to find yourself mm. and how you know being able to like be confident in what you made but mm. on, if anybody's seen on cover it's just a fantastic video of john just chatting about how things didn't feel right and that he wanted to just I don't know, we all get to that point in our lives where we feel like we need to move on, but we don't know what we're moving on to. Mm. And it's kind of, it's really, really nice to hear Jono chat about 
what he wants to do, how he wanted to do it, and how he needed to take a break. Mm. And I think we all need that. And that is, and this this platform has obviously given you. I mean, we I, I would never have thought to have done a podcast mm. uh, until we came along. and was like, oh yeah, we're doing a, a we're doing university uh, university in the university, and it's like <laughs> we want to create something. I was like, oh hell yeah! <laughs> so I mean, it is it's something. To, it's it's something to put on the CV again. Like absolutely. It's just Absolutely. being creative because even in lockdown, you know, I, we, we've talked about this before in um, episode two, but, yeah. you know, with university shutting down and the fact our modules got adjusted in such a way, it actually sparked a lot of creativity from yeah. both of us, I think. You know, it's made yeah. us start to think in really, really creative ways without anything holding us back or any <laughs> I say any pressure because obviously there was pressure in us to get the project done in a yeah, time yeah. Mm. but you know even then even after the deadline finished I was searching for something to do you know what I mean like just applying mm. for jobs every single day wasn't going to get it done yeah. so I genuinely thought to myself right if I'm going to stay busy over this summer I need to do something I need to find a way to keep busy and actually okay. funnily enough um, I, I've, I've had this, I talked about editing a little bit before, but I've had a love for editing all my videos and doing this and doing that and trying to find ways to kind of enhance that. So mm. I remember right at the start of lockdown, um, I had a look at, uh, Final Cut Pro. So, you know, the big, big yeah. editing software, everyone had done it. it's one of the most beautiful editing software pieces that you'll ever <laughs> find. <laughs> but it's not beautiful when you have a look at the price because the price is so yes. ridiculously yes. pricey. Thank you, but, Apple. Thank you, Apple. But I found a way around this. This is, this is a little bit of a hint if you guys haven't already found it. But uh, Apple do a Pro Apps for Education bundle. Mm. And in this bundle, you get Final Cut Pro, you get Motion 5, you get mm. uh, Logic, Logic Pro, which is the musical professional equivalent. Yes, it's you fantastic. get all of the professional applications that you will need and you get it for the price, for the amazing price of just 200 quid. Now, yeah. paying that up front, obviously is a bit costly there and then, yeah. but they will be yours forever and ever. A yeah. year. Instead of yeah. paying like 20 quid a month to use Adobe After Effects or Adobe mm -hmm. Photoshop, that is such a good price to use. And I thought to myself, you know what? I'm going to get my money's worth out of this. Because yeah. as much as I love iMovie, it's basic. Yeah, of course it is. It's basic. You want, you want actual proper editing software. To pay oh, 200 quid for all of those things. Like as, as costly as it, yeah, it's true. Because like you look at that, that one figure and you're like, oh my goodness. But, and it is an investment. It has to be an investment because it's a huge it, investment. It is a huge investment. It's 200, 200 bloody pounds, man. It's it's one of them. But at, at the end of the day, if if you if that's what you want to go into, mm. there comes a point when you're a creative where you say if you earn some sort of money and stuff, where that investment might be viable for you. And yeah. obviously, don't you know? Don't go into something thinking, all right, yeah, I'll just I'll just buy it and then I'll, I'll yeah, you know everything will just sort of fall into place. Do you know, it is, it's an investment when the time is right. I, I guess, and I'm, I'm guessing that's why you did it, because yeah. the time was right. Yeah, at the time, obviously, I wanted to develop my skills in editing. Yeah. I wanted to get better at it. I, found, I saw an opportunity, particularly during lockdown, mm -hmm. to develop my own skills. So um, I think I mentioned, I mentioned this last week in uh, episode three. I'm actually learning German um, oh, wow. as well on an on on the other side of things as well. I'm learning German. I'm, I'm doing so much more things than I could have possibly imagined alongside applying for jobs because mm -hmm. what else is there to do? I think the overall message from this episode is that mm -hmm. find creative ways, particularly if you're in performance or anything like that, find creative ways to de further develop your creative skills yeah. this summer alongside doing your studies because it develops your creative skills as i've just said but it also allows you to go back and say look i've done this this is where i want to hone my skills and it makes you noticed because what employ employers love is initiative 
they love initiative creativity and they like people who don't just sit down and say oh lockdown i know what to do fifa 20 <laughs> FIFA 20, man's getting that icon pack. Man's getting that icon squad. Man's going to be sweaty. Man is going to be like level 450 on Grand Theft Auto 5. Oh, I'm not going to have a life. I mean, I'm saying not going to have a life is a bit harsh, but. Um, <laughs> you have to find the right balance, is what he's saying. Basically. Oh, yeah, it's absolutely. You can, you, can, you can do your, your things, but these sort of things are like a worthy investment it's like it's it's like if you, if you have the choice of choosing between like a 60 pound video game and uh, like a, an editing software for three months it's it's one of those things that you could genuinely you know you genuinely have to think about it's one of those it's it just depends who and what <laughs> who and what they're doing yeah. i guess it's, uh, actually, it's it, actually said yeah. isn't it it's a foundation for our hopes and dreams yes it is absolutely it's literally the thing that you can build all your ideas off mm. um if i honestly if i had a macbook i'd have logic straight away i've got friends who use it um both my sort of friends who are proper songwriters they both use logic it's fantastic and, it is a, uh, it I'm, is I'm, I'm rather jealous i'm rather, rather jealous. jealous well if i come to manchester you can always use it thank you john thank you're so you. so welcome okay. i mean yes. just to build on the um quote of foundation for hopes and dreams you have a look mm. at people like joe sugg yeah you know i didn't know of him <laughs> until <laughs> until through until i found him through youtube it makes people mm -hmm. it does make people's careers and look at what he's gone on to do he went on to yeah. to come second and strictly come dancing found mm -hmm. himself a brilliant partner in diane boswell so yeah it's found him love it's found him money it's found him fame but he does it also because it's his career. It's what he enjoys yeah. doing, the creativity. Mm -hmm. And you can mm -hmm. see he's a performer as well because he's so, he's so open as well. That's what Very. YouTube, I think, does to people. It yeah. It brings out... It opens another open. dimension. Even yeah. if you didn't do drama, like there's going to be thousands and thousands of YouTubers out there, millions of YouTubers out there who will say that, oh, no, I've never had an interest in drama. Well, actually, I think you're doing it because you're acting to the camera. All of us are performers if you're yeah. doing something to the camera, apart from when you're Boris Johnson or Keir Starmer or any politician <laughs> who's just saying, oh, no, welcome welcome to all the Houses of Parliament. I, I am so, so glad to be welcoming you here today. Everywhere, Brat tour today. <laughs> Performance is everywhere. I, I, I think social media has made, has made it so that everything that we see, a lot of it is daft and funny and there's a lot of memes and exaggerations and stuff. I think, I think most people are born performers, just in, not in, like, in terms of you don't have to be an actor, but I think, I think a lot of people fit into that mould of being able to, to create funny videos and to be able to edit and to be able to do this, that and the other. They're just sort of, it's, it's like we've grown up knowing what Wi-Fi is and what a USB cable is and, and what HDMI port is. It's like they're just things that we've had to pick up because this is the world we live in. It's the digital age. I mean, um, yeah. yeah. I mean, to be fair, you talk about Wi-Fi, USB ports, <laughs> HDMI cables and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> Don't I just know it? I've been back here and my parents <laughs> are offering me up like tech support. Like the amount of times that my dad has said, oh, I can't see this phone. Dad, it's because you've not got a case on it. It's <laughs> black. It's a black case. Yes, you might. You, he's complaining about the fact the phone is so thin and the fact he can't see it. <laughs> and I'm like, dad, you need to put a case on it. That yeah, makes it stand it, out. And then yeah, every single time, it, the, every single time the Wi-Fi goes down, he says, y you know, can you help us out with this? And I'm like, <sighs> I can, but surely you're paying for it. You have to know how to do it. Just the it's other day, it. just the it's other day, it. just the other day, we've got, we have, we've got a smart TV and yeah. he was watching YouTube on it. And um, he was trying to work out how to pause it because he thought that on the remote, it was like the middle button. But actually, <laughs> what he didn't realize was that the pause icon was literally just right below him. And I took <laughs> it from him and I was like, it's just as easy as that. <laughs> he was like, how did you do that? And I said, dad, the pause button is right below you. <laughs> like, oh, I never saw that before. <laughs> and I was like, Dad, you really have a lot oh. to learn. 
Bless uh, you. I mean, uh, I mean, it's one of those. I think it's an even trade-off. I think I think when your parents have raised you for God knows how many years, I think I think I, I have to sort of like you have to bite your tongue. You're like, okay, this is how Bluetooth works. This is how Wi-Fi works, and this, that, and the other. And then eventually, if you sort of if you give them like if you put it into decent terms and i'm not saying that but my parents are all right with technology and things like that but like if, if you if you just say it simply and slowly they seem to catch up and once they've caught up they are kind of on the same level as us it just eventually. takes a while yeah yeah of eventually. course, of course. Take a while. It, 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 it takes a bit of time it does take yeah, a bit absolutely. of time sometimes absolutely but it's like it's nice to bring them into sort of I say bring them in. My dad bought one, like bought a computer in like 2003. He was just like, "Oh, let's get one. Why not?" <laughs> um, it, so it was always sort of like it's in, you know, the, it's it was always a possibility. We just grown up with it, really. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's always nice being able to sort of help out because we just we I guess we get it a little bit better than the sort of older generations do. We must, we must do. It's, it's just because we, we're on our phones all the time. <laughs> we're on our phones all the time. I mean, it's reached peak hours, hasn't it? That like, yeah. you know how Apple on their phones, they brought out, like, they tell you how much your screen time is there. Oh, screen time, it's like, yeah. It's like for people, for, for younger listeners, it's really unlucky for you guys that you've actually now, you're now being brought up in this era where Apple actually give ammunition to your to your parents, your parents to say you spent too long on this phone today get off it the phone is telling you you spent way too long looking at a screen so here's a book i'm taking that from you now read <laughs> the one good thing is the one good thing during lockdown i think everybody has been addicted to their phones a little oh, bit yeah. more even a little bit more than usual my mm. screen time per day is laughable it's like yeah because uh, i i do a lot of well i've, I've um I do a lot of Instagram and Snapchat and things like that. And I'm obviously always chatting to mates and things. And then I do Skype in the evenings when I'm playing Warzone and when I'm totally not dying in the first 20 people. Um, oh, so it's, it's one of the, yeah, it's, it's one of those. I, but my, my screen time is literally up to like 14 hours a day. Because as soon as I get oh, up, yeah. I'm straight on the phone. As soon as I'm downstairs, straight on the phone. I'm talking to my mum, we're researching something, straight on the phone. On the phone, yeah. Just because I, it's... Yeah. it's, it's we can't, you know, this is why I started running again. Uh, <laughs> to get like, away. But, to get wait, away let, but wait, let yeah. me guess. Were, were you just running with your phone, just like <laughs> going swaying on the side? Just way yeah. like that. To be fair, swaying I in do... my hand, Swiping left and right on Tinder, yes. <laughs> Not like that. It's, it's like, you know that FIFA 20 celebration where they're just oh, like... Oh, with the... Yeah. They're, yeah, they're yeah. doing that baby, like, rock a baby <laughs> on the phone o'clock. I, <laughs> when the wind blows, the phone will fly out of my hand. <laughs> yeah, probably. Always, uh, keep, always keep your phone in a zip up pocket, especially when you're running. Mm. Uh, always, always look after your phone. And a final <laughs> message to all you university listeners don't go on your phone during class, don't go on your phone during lectures. Admittedly, we did because we sent the group chat absolutely <laughs> wild over lectures. <laughs> I'm not gonna. <laughs> memes, memes were spread. Memes. Oh, were spread. I'm not gonna lie. They were brilliant. They were brilliant, weren't they? Uh, I, I don't yeah. know. The, 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 the worst, the worst thing I ever did was I, I like obviously with the lecture theatre, you have like desks, mm. and I just used to when I got when I got so bored. Oh God, you did, didn't you? Uh, yeah. When I, got bored, <laughs> I used to oh, sit. God. On, I used to sit under the desk. <laughs> and I just used to sit on my phone because the lectures would last for about two hours. And and they, didn't, sit... they didn't notice you. No, at all. I just, what I do is what I do is I'd record it from my laptop. So my laptop was, record, was recording the audio. The <laughs> and I'd put that into software and I just sat on my phone. And... <laughs> it's like, I was like, I'm on Amazon. Does anyone want anything? Oh, oh my god! <laughs> so no, but it, well, that's the thing. Phones are taking over, Jono. Phones are taking they're, over. They're taking it's over. Totally not me it's being lazy. Like, it's not I mean, me it's, being lazy, mate. It's better than someone actually just like being in the middle. I mean, the best part about sitting in lecture <laughs> theatres, guys, if you're going into university at some point, obviously you're going to be going in in so much more different conditions than we had. Uh, mm. Try and get all the way to the back back like row guys right at the top i mean <laughs> it, it is absolute heaven because you can spy on everyone else to see which guy is not listening because admittedly you guys are not listening by spying but i actually remember we were right at the top one day 
and I was looking along the laptops because I was just had a momentary loss of concentration. But in the corner of my eye, I spotted someone playing football manager. Someone was playing football manager. <laughs> And they had <laughs> the most rubbish tactic that you had ever <laughs> seen. And I was wow. looking and I was like, yeah, he's, he definitely ain't got the game. He definitely <laughs> hasn't got the gist of the game. I was, You've, got your lecturer. Was. You've got your lecturer in front of you telling you about like, like the, you know, what, whether it's, it's something like ancient history or something. It was something really cool and your eye is just drawn to someone's football manager tactics. And you're I mean, like, at the time, yeah. at the time, our lecturer was talking about postmodernism, so I understood his... That's fine, that's boring. I, I understood like, his grief. I understood yeah. his grief. I mean, if any tutors are watching this, we love you, we're sorry. We love you too. Yes, uh, we do. But we are digressing massively on the conversation. So I think today... <laughs> well, well, today? So right now is a perfect time to end the podcast yes, for this episode. Yes, <laughs> I, I'm definitely going to edit that out. So yeah, <laughs> <I> th- <laughs> uh, to the benefit of anybody who, who, if we've done an edit, uh, John just messed up about nine different words all in a row. So, <laughs> so I might keep just, that bit in. I don't know. I need to listen to that back. I, I tell you how do it. Do it. Keep, keep but anyway, it in, guys. Keep it in. <laughs> anyway, guys, for those of you who are now listening to the edited piece, you know what? Scrap it. We're keeping this whole bit We're in. We're keeping it in. We're keeping it's it in just, that's just, my birthday just for the Christmas giggles. Presents. For that's the my birthday giggles. and Christmas presents. Right. So for the third time, lucky guys, thank you very, very much for listening in to Universally University <laughs> once again. Thank you very much, Dan, for actually choosing to come back from the clutches of Liverpool <laughs> and it's been a start pleasure, co-hosting well. again. Indeed, indeed. It's, Back full time now. Back full it's time. It's been brilliant. Anyway, it's guys, been, yeah, next week pleasurable. we will have guests back on the show and they will be some very great guests. And we will make We're this We're not revealing great. who they are yet. Well, I, didn't say, I, I totally did not just say we will make this podcast great again. I don't know what's happened to me this, <laughs> today. It's already great. It's already it's great. Donald what am Trump. I saying? Donald Trump. Yes. Like Donald Trump? No, that actually works. <laughs> that that works. No, what have you done, Daniel? What have you done? Yes, I have created the perfect meme. Is what I've no. created. Uh, <laughs> right, guys, thank you very much for listening, and we will see you very soon. See you later, guys. Bye.